ओम सहनावतु सहनावुनक्तु सहवीर्यम करवावहि तेजस्विनावधी तमस्तुमाविद्विशावहि ओम शांति 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 निरुपमनित्यमित्तु गदर निरुपमनित्यमिरं शकेत्यखंडे मायिचिति सर्वविकल्पनादिशून्ये घटयति जगदीश जीवभेदं त्वघटिता घटना पटीयसी माया श्रुतिशतनिकमांत शोधकानपी आहाधनाधिमिदर्शनेन सत्यः कलुषयति चतुष्पदाद्यभिन्नाम् अघटित घटना पटीयसी माया नेक्स्ट वन सुखचित खंड विबोध मत्वितियम् सुखचित खंड सुखचेतन खंडविबोधमद्वितीयम् कंदविबोधमद्वितीयम् वियदनलादि वियनलादि विनिर्मिते नियोज्य ब्रह्मयति भवसागरे नितांतम् ब्रह्मयति भवसागरे नितांतम् त्वघटित घटना पटीयसी माया सुखचित खंड विबोध मत्वितियम् सुखचित खंड विबोध मत्वितियम् वियदनलादि विनिर्मिते नियोज्य वियदनलादि विनिर्मिते नियोज्य भ्रमयति भवसागरे नितांतम् भ्रमयति भवसागरे नितांतम् त्वघटित घटना पटीयसी माया so, moving forward, verse number 3, again satirical, this is a whole satire on Maya. And yesterday we saw how she, Kalushayati, confuses, corrupts all the people who are supposed to be the cream of the crop in terms of researchers, scholars and pandits, big, big pandits with lots of vibhuti stripes, you know, strutting around. You know, and uh, Vibhuti, Chandanam, all these things they have all over the body as a mark of their bhakti, as a mark of their knowledge. So these are all Visharadas. Visharadas means, Visharad means very, very learned. And then, you know, what happens to them? They start fighting with each other like four-footed creatures, not to insult four-footed creatures, but you know, there is a certain kind of an impulsivity and a bestiality that comes out. Why? Because they take their identification with the body, with their learning all too seriously and they get tempted by all kinds of little whatever, you know, little gems that Maya throws at them. Fame, name, etc. We, we have seen that. Now, Sukha, Sukha Chit. Sukhachit. Here, we know it's like saying that chit, that chit which is myself. Chit here means awareness, consciousness. So this chit, which is consciousness, which is awareness, which is the truth of I, what is its swarupa? Sukha. Hmm. Yeah, why? Because the, the mind is not uh, confused anymore about its nature. And one is not 
identify with the body much less the mind and so therefore one is not confused about the the uh, you know cause of existence and all these things because everything uh, you know they is seen as ishvara well, where is the maya when you see things as ishvara so this is what we are going to talk about at the end you know what maya how do you spell maya you know where is it where is she so this is what the whole thing is this is what is called taranam the crossing so crossing maya meaning you, see, you, you, you make her very cross when you see everything as Ishvara. <laughs> that's, that's what happens. And so, this we'll talk about that, you know, how to, how to adapt that, uh, how to bring that about in one's daily life. We will talk about that uh, at the end. So, but now, this Chit, this consciousness is Sukhasvarupa. You know, Kham is, is the name for Brahman, actually. Kam is also Brahman, Kam Brahma. Kam Brahma, Kam Brahma. Both are there. Vrhadaranika Upanishad Vakya. Kam Brahma, without the aspiration. Kam Api Brahma. So Kam means it is the name for Brahma. And Kam is also space. So, you know, Kam Khe Khani, space. You know, space also is called Kam. Why? Brahman is unbound like space. Mm. And then if you add su, which is the, uh, what is that, which is the prefix of auspiciousness and wonderfulness. Sukham mm. means happy space. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, different from the happy place that you go to when you want to avoid something, okay? <laughs> That's not what we are talking about. A happy uh, uh, sense of being, A happy, you know, A happy beingness. That beingness, which is sat, which happens to be not insentient but very much sentient. So that is happy. And then that why is that happy? Because nothing else is there other than itself. And it is of the nature of complete self-approval. It is of the nature of, you know, no fears, no tears because no, nobody else is there. How can it be afraid? What is there to be afraid of? What is there to be sad about? And it has everything it wants. Why? Because Sukham Ashnute, everything, you know, because the desirer is knocked off. This is what Vedanta does. Vedanta doesn't try to fulfill desires. No, that's a waste of time. Why? Because you cannot fulfill desires. How many times to tell you? <laughs> try fulfilling even one desire. You see how difficult it is. After you fulfill one desire, you then have the next desire, I need a rest, I need to go lie down. That will be the next desire because you are wiped out, I tell you. Because you have to, you know, uh, what should I say, uh, have a little boxing match with all the variables, you know, all the factors that stand against you. And these are just the known variables. What about unknown variables? You don't even know them, but you are still boxing the air, hoping to get them in one swipe or another. And then what? I think happens most of the times the desires don't give. Desires are not easily to easy to fulfill. They're not easily fulfilled at all. If anything, it's the opposite. Very tough to fulfill desires. And then you know, so if you are, you know, if you are, if Vedanta is trying to remove sorrow by fulfilling every desire, then it will be like a codependent parent, mother Shruti. Yeah, you know. The, the, the mother is guilty because she has to work or whatever reason. And then she, she doesn't see the child enough. So whenever she sees the child, she doesn't want to be the disciplinarian. So she gives unto it whatever it wants. And that makes for a cranky adult, you know, when, when that child grows up. Cranky adult wanting to have its own way. But then confronting a world of, uh, you know, Horrors. This is the world of horrors called samsara. Why is it a world of horrors? Because everything that you want, you don't get. And whatever it is that you don't want, you get three helpings off, at least. Yeah. You know, whether it's gray hair or disease or death or, you know, any kind of mental, uh, you know, issues, anguish, uh, you know, anxiety, everything. You get it three times over. Three helpings freely. No, no, have some more. Come on. <laughs> no, I think it's enough. No, no. 
It's tasty, you like it. It has a nice aftertaste, you know, because you can just sit and talk about it with other people, you know, because misery loves company. So that's why. It's a discussion. It's a talking, what is that called? Talking. Uh, uh, you know, not like that. There is some kind of conversation piece. That's the word I was looking for. It's a talking piece. You can you can have something to talk about. How was your day? Uh, you start like that, you know. And then you then they will say, oh, okay. Sometimes they don't listen because their day was ah. So, but still, when they do listen, you can exchange how difficult things are. And these are just the known variables. Think of all the unknown variables, you know, that one has to confront. So therefore, you know, fulfilling each and every desire in order to become happy is a very sad and a useless endeavor. A lifelong uh, not only a lifelong endeavor, a life after life after life after life after life after life after life endeavor. I just stopped not because it is, it's only six lives, but because otherwise we'll be here all day long. Yeah. That, this is the endeavor, you know. And this endeavor is not questioned. Socially, individually, that I need to keep on flailing in order to fulfill the desire is not questioned because there is some kind of an invisible thread connecting desire to sukham, happiness. Happiness is joining the desired object with the desirer. So the desirer, A, subject, has to become one with the object, you know. You can you can have things ice cream okay you know and uh, and one that's why it's called ice cream because you get it after a lot of screaming yes <laughs> so ice cream so the, and the Taitri Upanishad discusses this very well oh Taitri Upanishad knows about ice cream <laughs> <laughs> perhaps but Taitri Upanishad does not discuss ice cream but discusses the process of unification of the desirer with the desire to show the limitations. So first is what, you know, you see the ice, you hear the ice cream truck. Let us, let's all go old fashioned. Ting, 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 it's driving through the neighborhood. You know, and then there is a smile. Small smile. I know what's going to happen. He's going. To, he's now in two streets over, and he's going to turn over there and then come over here, and then I. It's enough time for me to get the money I need, and then go out of the door and wave, wave the truck, flag the truck down. You have, you're fully confident, confident. And what is this? This is called ishtavastu darshanam. You know. And this is a small happiness because you, you know, there is a many a slip between the cup and the lip. So many things can happen, you know. He could just decide to not come down your road and then you will be, you know, instead of ice cream, you will be melting at the doorstep in the heat. So, so many things are there. So it's a small happiness, tiny happiness. And that, you know, that Upanishad gives a word for it. Priya, you know. Priya. Priya means, Priya is the stage of happiness where ishtavastu darshanam. Either you spy, I spy with my own eyes the ice cream truck or I hear with my own ears the ice cream truck. So, this is what is called, you know, what is that called? Priya. Then what happens? Then let us say, you know, all goes well. The ice cream truck comes round the bend and then not only goes down your street, sees your frantically flailing, waving hand and decides to stop. And then money is given and that your, your, your desired cone is there, you know. And you take that cone in the hand. Then what happens to you? The smile becomes wider. <laughs> All 28 teeth. Yeah, no more, you cannot say 32 anymore. Wisdom teeth, gone. So, all 28 teeth are, you know, there. Correct? Mm -hmm. And you're looking at the ice cream, you know, with, with that, with the love with which the mother gazes f first at her first bomb. 
you know, looking at it, ah, oh, it's mine. But not yet yours because it's, you know, in, especially in this country, I mean, it's, it's, it's scary how much ice cream they give, you know. It's, it's really scary. Like if you go to India and ask for an ice cream, it's a small scoop. It's, you know, you can look at it and not faint. Yeah, but here, they, you know, the cone is like this. And on top of that, they have piled this huge mushroom cloud kind of a thing. And then if you want two scoops, then that's even more. Because here also you look at it and you feel very happy. The teeth have come out. There is a little pep in the step. And then you're, you know, coming up your porch. And then what happens, you know? Gone. The scoops decide to decide to depart <laughs> and decide to grace the porch and make a nice wet rangoli. Okay? <laughs> because you forgot to put rangoli today, they decided two different colors, white and pink, strawberry, vanilla. Nicely, they made a nice design. And then what happened? Of course. So that's why it's not the ultimate happiness. <laughs> In terms of object-subject union has not yet taken place. So ishtavastu darshanam priyaha and ishtavastu prapti. It is in your in your grubby paws. You, you still haven't become one with it yet. Correct? So ishtavastu prapti, what is the name for that? Priya. Moda. Priya, first, first level of happiness, tiny sukha and a little more sukha. In anticipation, you sit up straight. Yes, 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 it's coming closer. Yes, 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 yippee. Moda. And then what happens? Then, let's say, the ice cream does not become a wet rangoli. The ice cream is saved. And then you come to your living room. And then you attack it. You attack the ice cream. You, you, you know, you, you, you become one. You attain, you know, oneness with the ice cream. A totally surreal Advaita experience on the experiential level. Correct. So then, what happens? That is also a level of happiness. It's the ultimate level of happiness is what, what you are able to get. The subject-object uh, uh, union, fusion, is for that kind of happiness, this is the ultimate level. And what is its name? Oh. Anybody? Pramoda. Very good. Priya. Moda. Pramoda. <laughs> And this is described very beautifully in the Taittiriya Upanishad with the help of a metaphor of a birdie. Mm. Yeah. You know, Tasya Priya Me Vashiraha Modo Dakshin of Pakshaha Pramoda Uttar of Pakshaha Ananda Atma Brahma Pucham Pratishtha Tadapyesha shloko bhavati. Beautiful. So it is like a bird. Why a bird? You will see very quickly. You know, because you have to have, you need something to visualize. The, you know, the various, because we have cut up this sukha, which is niratishaya sukha. Sukha without cause, sukha without consequence, sukha without subject object. We have cut it up into subject object experience, at least three. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we need to have a visualization of these three cut up, you know, the process of cutting up has to be analyzed. And for that purpose, there is a metaphor of the bird. So what is this bird? Let us say, the bird has for its head small sukha. You know, after all, it's a bird brain. That's why. Small sukha. Tasya priya me vashiraha. Then, the of pakshaha. Pakshaha here means wing. That's why the bird is called Pakshi, the one that has wings. You know? Pakshaha Syasthiti Pakshin. So, so the left wing is what, you know, not Marxists, okay? Don't don't think like that. <laughs> Communists. No, we are not going there. <laughs> and right wing is supremacist. No. <laughs> 
this is literal left wing of the bird is little more sukha ishtavar vastu darshanam priya ishta vastunah praapti modah so this is let us visualize the left wing as ishta vastu praapti when i get something that i want it is what modah and then when i am one with that which i want then what is it pramodah this is, and then what then the bird of course is not just a head and uh, two wings unless it's a decoy you know <laughs> this is a real bird <laughs> it has to have a being what is the beingness of this bird of uh, you know sukha the beingness is limitlessness ananda which is ananta so from that limitlessness the small limited happinesses are milked out yeah milked out by you know human beings searching for happiness you know and then what and then what is the foundation of this limitless ananda what well, to whom we can ask i mean it's an awkward question but you understand to whom does this ananda belong and we have to say brahman puchha puchha means punch in hindi punch punch means what tail brahma puchham pratishtha so the foundation of this bird because the bird cannot really sit properly without the tail the tail gives it its stability when it is perched somewhere even when it flies that's why they have various kinds of tails you know and then you know so the tail gives it the foundation and the stability and so the tail here is brahman the atma its very being whose very being is ananda ananda here is limitless limitlessness is joy because there is no cut up experience see when you are eating ice cream you have to either be the ice cream or the experiencer or all this you can't do, you know the, the this nirati shaya sukha the sukha that is not cut up into subject object experience you know uh, and means of knowledge difference is not available in the jagat at all in any kind of an experience with the jagat then where is it available it is the truth it is the pucham of the experiencer it's the content of the experiencer and so therefore here this you know this you know vedanta does not try to fulfill desires or vedantin does not cannot try to get happiness by fulfilling desire it's a very very you know futile a feckless choice a futile choice absolutely because you know nothing comes of it nothing at all comes of it and so therefore what to do you know to uh, you you have to interrogate the nature of the self am i a desirer that is what you have to uh, understand if you are a desirer if desirer is an epithet a moniker for you that means what you can never be without desiring then that means you are bound to constantly be fulfilling the desire one one after the other correct incorrect <laughs> because that's not how it is that is not what you, uh, uh, that is not the truth of you at all and so what now you know so you because all you need to do is to analyze the sushupti sleep experience in sleep are you a desirer no in sleep are you happy yes and i don't know about you but your family members as i told you are very happy because you don't complain in sleep <laughs> somebody is happy in sleep <laughs> somebody or the other you need to i think plug this otherwise it will uh, it will go now yeah so then uh, you know Uh, this is what the this is what the problem is the problem is that you know one thinks that the desirer is an identity the desirer is an identity that is indelible and that is fused with the nature of the self not so because even without desire in sleep what desire do you have you know in sleep what is that you know uh, uh, you know Uh, the the one without one with mother becomes motherless in sleep the one with kingdom becomes kingdomless in sleep all this is brahmaranya cognition you know 
and then uh, uh, and the one who is a mother becomes the you know childless in sleep mata amata bhavati pita apita bhavati you know and the father becomes again offspringless in in sleep the king becomes kingdomless in sleep so therefore well, you know what is there there is nothing no desire is fulfilled you don't have any possessions you know and then you are still the happiest ever the happiest being ever so a uh, a cursory analysis of sleep tells us a lot tells us that the connection between the desire and the desirer is not real it's a mayik prasada maya's prasada <laughs> maya means what here ajnanam atma ajnanam eva maya that is what it is so maya is used in many different ways so this is one of the meanings is atma ajnanam so because of this atma ajnanam alone i have this problem so therefore vedanta doesn't bother we trying to tell you how to fulfill the desires rather what does it do it interrogates the nature of the desirer and then falsifies the desirer the desirer is an as though superimposition upon that i which is free of being a desirer so vedanta diffs the desirer <laughs> knocks off the desirer and then uh, if without being the desirer what are you always happy nitya sukha <laughs> yeah so this is how in the uh, taitriya and other upanishads it says sarvan kaman samashnute sarvan kaman samashnute means get, gets fulfills all the desires in one stroke how is that possible if i want ice cream which is a sweet dish and chewda which is a savory dish how can i eat it together and still feel satisfied it will be a mess definitely it will be a mess that's not what is being talked about what is being talked about is that when the nature of the desiring person is revealed to be a non desiring non demanding uh, already happy already limitless person it's like having all the desires fulfilled at the same time the desirer is knocked off from the equation of the i it does not feature into the self identity self definition of the self so this is what is sukha chit this is what it is because it is always happy because why because in the light of this knowledge anything you desire is not a non separate from you first we say ishvara and then we say you it's all non separate from you it's you 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 alone and so then how can you desire what you already have you can't you know and uh, so therefore there is no longing there is no longing when there is a sense of belonging and vedanta first and foremost gives that sense of belonging and this is what is you know this is what is here this is the nature of one as sukha chit and then what kind of a sukha chit what kind of a happy you know limitlessly happy consciousness is there you know which is akhanda akhanda means you know unmitigated you know un uh, un uh, tempered not tempered not mitigated not cut up not edited abridged and punctuated you know ananda akhanda ananda uh, an ananda that is you know that is whole a limitless happiness that is whole that is based on you rather than on an object so the subject object difference is not there you are happy without reason like in sleep you are happy even when you don't have anything like in sleep you are happy when you can't get anything like in sleep except you are not asleep you are awake to this ananda you know you are contented and that contentment is the first sign of a gnani and that is what is being talked about here very beautiful and then so akhanda vibodham vibodham here is knowledge and what is this knowledge that the knower is a superimposition upon the atma brahman 
and the known is a superimposition upon the atma and then the means of knowing eyes ears etc any kind of pramana is also a superimposition upon the atma this is what is called akhanda vidvibodham advitiyam so there is no knower you know i as knower i am all knowledge without needing to be a knower how can i be all knowledge without needing to be a knower again we go back to the same questions we have been asking since we started the text are you here what yes. will you say yes yes because yes. <laughs> you are tired of answering it yeah yeah yes okay so then the next question is what how do you know how do you know that you are here well you don't say i'm sitting in front of a mirror hello i can see my my reflection no <laughs> you know oh i have derived an equation by which i can prove that i exist you don't say that either this is not a, a subject matter for equation this is not a subject matter for deduction inference nothing no induction no deduction no inference it is knowledge and it is all knowledge because you are all that is what it is it's all knowledge because you know you are without needing to lean upon any kind of a book holy book or any kind of a book unholy book holy book or vridha vyavahara let me see if the grandmother exists then i can tell you if i also exist no <laughs> grandmother you know got moksha long ago and you know and you so you can't even call her back and ask her so you don't need to do that correct you don't your existence is is untethered by an unconditional by any other no other qualifications no conditions it is unconditional existence and this unconditional existence is unconditioned knowledge because that existence i am made aware of constantly and that constantly is ananda ananta all the time forever forever it's not that yesterday i was self evident today uh, it's been a bad day bad day i'm having some you know like a brain is uh, i'm having a brain freeze or a brain eclipse so i'm not able to you know think very clearly so today i don't know i may not be self evident but yesterday was a great day i was self evident who will talk like that you know even if you pay them they will not talk like that okay because it makes no sense you are self evident all the time even in sleep you are self evident except the mind is retreated to a causal state but that that is why you recognize sleep in hindsight you don't recognize sleep immediately in the process but you are self evident in sleep you are self evident in waking you are self evident in dreaming and that self evidence is what all knowledge it is knowledge of your existence and that you is everything that's all it is and you know and then it is knowledge of even if you say it's knowledge of things in the universe you are still all knowing what is all things that you know plus things that you don't know correct mm -hmm. so then if if it is a combination of things that you know and things that you don't know do you know all that you know yes. yeah <laughs> yeah do you know that there are many things you don't know yes mm -hmm. and so that means what you are all knowing sarvagnya see so easy mahavakya is so easy you are all knowing you know what you know you know what you don't know and that i know i am never becomes i don't know so this is a knowledge that never cancels itself it's a self evident knowledge it's a knowledge that cannot be separated from your existence it's an existent knowledge which is forever and that is you and that is what is talked about as sukha chit akhanda vibodham this is the vibodha this is the knowledge and this knowledge what you know is like an oceanic limitless knowledge and then if you if you say ah i know what shall we know today part <laughs> i know part if you say then that knowledge as though that oceanic knowledge as though morphs into two waves three actually but let us discuss two first 
known object object wave pot and pot is nothing but pot knowledge so the knowledge manifests as the pot and then the knowledge manifests as this being who is this me the knower of pot so knower is there you out of this oceanic knowledge we have a, a little wave called knower another wave called known but how do i sense this pot i look at it correct so my eyes fall on this pot and so there is a third wave what is that knowing wave how to know something wave means of knowledge wave so then you know so uh, you know drink see here and drishta seeing and then what uh, drishti sight pramata no uh, knower prameya known and pramana means of knowledge so these three things the knowledge you know is not split into these three entities it is as though morphed into these entities without undergoing any change it's an appearance on the oceanic limitless consciousness it's not that the oceanic limitless consciousness has first become the knower and then become the known and then become the means of knowledge it is all three at the same time it lends its existence to all three without becoming any one of them it is ever free ever limitless just like the ocean lend its its existence sustains each and every wave out of those that ocean the wave comes by that ocean the wave is you know received sustain and uh, unto that ocean the wave resolves so like this it can sport many waves one ocean it does not become slim because it has too many waves <laughs> not possible this is what is called in sanskrit as sukhachit akhanda vibodham which is at the same time advitiyam there is no duality no or no duality is just on the mithya level this is maya this is this is mithya this is not the absolute reality it is a it is an apparent reality this is what maya this is the operation this is the queendom of maya this is where she operates on the apparent reality making the apparent real is her business mm -hmm. this is what it is so then in this in this amorphous non separate consciousness without any distinction which is me which is which is advaya which is non dual then viyada uh, viyat viyat means space anala uh, fire adi so space fire then if you say you know this is like a, a sad quiz you know cat coat umbrella boots <laughs> so then if i say space fire what yeah. do you have to add water earth, water, earth and then and uh, water earth uh, air yeah you have to add the other three elements because and you cannot say you cannot say oranges and bananas you have to it should be the same same jati it should be so so viyada aviyad analadi so we with the help of these five elements vinirmite vinirmite means having specifically constructed niyojya through a special arrangement vinirmite niyojya it's not an accidental arrangement that all things come from the five elements and the five elements came out first no this is a very intelligently put together arrangement it's a wonderful arrangement infallible law of the universe that everything comes from the five elements the five elements have come from where from the atma the five elements came from the atma came again in within quotes okay yeah five elements can be traced to the atma so to speak because everything comes from brahman from atma and so the five elements are also from the atma via danaladi vinirmite means having constructed in the construction of that niyojya having made arrangement and what is this arrangement huh? the arrangement is not of the five elements 
you know, the arrangement is what all has infallibly come out of the five elements. That is the arrangement which is cleverly not even mentioned here. Mm. It is the human body, mm. your own body. What is your body except water in the form of all fluids, blood, you know? And then what is the body other than earth? That's the, the earth is the foundation and so too the bones are the foundation of the body. Bone is equal to earth. Mm -hmm. And then water is equal to all the blood, fluids, etc. And then what else? Air, uh, you know, is in the head, of course. You know. <laughs> That's why there is an air expression air head. You know. <laughs> yeah. So, air, space, etc. You know, they, they, they are there in the, they are there in the, between the bones, there is air. You know, that's why when you, you know, there's a tick tick sound, yeah. <laughs> so, because we, without the air, they don't, the joints don't move. That's why when there is arthritis, etc., it is a vata disorder. Vata mm. means the air element is not functioning properly, it's in imbalance. So, then the water element also can get in imbalance. And so, air is there, water is there, earth is there. And then, fire. Fire when? Hunger. Vaishvadara. And then also, temperature. Now, we have to get used to temperature checks. You go to the market and they go like this. You, go, you, you get on the plane, hopefully you don't have to. But if you have to get on the plane, they go like with a little temperature wand. You know? So that temperature, that 98.6, whatever that normal temperature is fire. That is what is fire. That is why he is called Jata Veda. Jate Jate Vidyate. As soon as one is born, one is aware of this, you know, whether the, the baby is warm or not. They touch the baby as soon as it's born. And they see, ha, huh, okay, it is warm, it is alive, it's not crying because lazy fellow needs a little thwack on the back and then he will cry. But, you know, here the baby is alive because it is warm. This is what Agni makes itself felt even as one is born. Fantastic this. That's why he's called Jata Veda, one meaning. And then, you know, so space, of course, is there. Space is there between the joints, space is there in the stomach, space is of course there in the head, you know, it has to be there. And, uh, you know, so uh, so air, water, fire, space, uh, all, all of it, earth, all these five elements, this body is just crafted from the five elements. Air is there in the lungs, you know. And in the head, of course, don't forget. Yeah. So, so this is, this is, you know, so this is body is nothing but a bunch of five elements in a kind of a very beautiful configuration walking around. Yeah. And when that configuration gets disturbed, that is also beautiful. That is also built into the configuration that it will get disturbed. And the person, well, you know, after a certain age, also walks around, but sounds like a creaky door. Yeah, all the time creaks, gets up, creak, creak, you know, sits down, crack, crack. This is what the whole thing is, you know. And so, therefore what? So this, this neojanam, this neojanam means this arrangement. What does this, and the arrangement also includes tadatmya. I told you yesterday or day before, what is Tadatmya? Identification. identification. Very good. So, Tadatmya means identification. So, this, you cannot have, you know, a nicely crafted body from the five elements without the person saying, this is my body. <laughs> That's dangerous. You have to have, you know, some, you know, you have to have some kind of a thing here. So the body has to be, you know, crafted from the five elements and then somebody should own up the body because the poor body has to be taken care of. You can't just, you know, otherwise you will forget your body, you know, in the, in the supermarket. Why? <laughs> because you forgot your wallet and glasses and you forgot the body also. Because if that identification was not there, that is what it would be. It would be like the person who doesn't feel any pain. There are some people in the world who don't feel any pain at all. And then what happens to them? They just keep hurting themselves. 
so you are the managing trustee of this body and so therefore you need to be able to own up this body as your own and part of that ownership is called sahajatadatmya sahajatadatmya a kind of a natural identification you know meaning if somebody pinches you you, you know your spouse doesn't say ow okay yeah you say ow your child doesn't say ow when somebody pinches you you say stop that what are you doing that hurts you know then your twin brother or twin sister doesn't say ow you say ouch so this is what is called sahajatadatmya then there is another kind of a you know identification why this body why did i get this body why didn't i get the body of mike tyson or whoever you know some kushti wala you know or some strong fellow some tall person some very you know what is that uh, some uh, person who does feat of endurance maybe uh, you know marathon runner like this bolt very interesting the runner's name is bolt yeah so <laughs> usain bolt yeah he was really he had a very long uh, you know uh, long run mm -hmm. of uh, championship title so how come i don't have his body well because there is a karmic connection between the indweller of the body and the and the body you are supposed to live with this body why so you can complain louder that's all <laughs> no other reason <laughs> you can complain a little more that's all no other reason why because there is some kind of a karmic connection you cannot have the bo the, the body of a of of bolt you can you can you can, you know why because that's not good for you but why is it not good for me because in throughout life after life you have been bolting from every situation it's time you stood up and faced it with courage so no running okay yeah oh is that what it is yes is that karma yes it's karma because and then this particular body this particular kind of parents who you know contributed that genetic material to constituting this particular body it is what is called karma jatadatmya born you know karmana you know karma bihi jayate karmana jayate karma jam here it should be karma bihi because lots of karmas are involved so these are the two kinds of a natural identification with the body that this part of the niyojana arrangement and then there is a third kind of a tadatmya what is that you know bhranti jatadatmya bhranti jatadatmya you know bhranti na jayate bhranti means you know actually it's very interesting bhranti comes from bhram bhram uh, is a uh, root verb bhram first conjugation and the root word bhram is defined as anavasthane anavasthane means you know more less not more or less more <laughs> less okay no anchor you know unsteady not rooted anavastha and circling around that is the meaning of the verb, verb itself you know so then what you know so niyojya because of this arrangement what has this maya done this is all maya because maya is the raw material maya is the is the arranger she is the creatrix up to no good full of tricks and this tricky maya has confined me as it were to this body full of problems and then as a result of what this person and that's also not mentioned here the saha or this purushaha this person bhramayati actually bhramati should have been enough but it's kind of a rare usage bhramayati not uh, it is not causal that would be bramyati so but here it is bramayati the person is bewildered it is she bewilders you know so the person is bewildered because of maya so the maya bewilders and deludes the person where bhava sagare the person is going glub 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 in the ocean of samsara and it is an ocean of samsara because you say this is my body oh my god it has all these diseases starting with congenital disease and then you know by the time you are 50 for until 40 you eat the food you know 
and after 40, the food takes revenge and eats you. That's why you say, I can't have sugar, it will eat me up. I can't have, what is there another one? Gluten, you know. Out of the 10 things you can eat, gluten is not one of them. And then, you know, and then what? You can't have grains, you can't have this, you can't have that, you know. Nothing you can have, you know. You open the front door, take a deep breath, breakfast. <laughs> And then for a change, open the back door, take a deep breath, lunch, finished. And then you are tired, you need a nap. So this is the body. And then so identifying with this body, the person feels completely trapped, the person feels singled out, the person feels, oh, how can God be so mean and my eyes so horrible and then I am in samsara. So what to do? Remove the tadatmya. What tadatmya to remove? Can you remove, uh, you know, the first one, no. uh, which, which, is the, which was the first uh, identification? Sahaja Tadatmya. Can you remove? No. no. <laughs> because it is Sahaja. It is spontaneous and natural. It is made by Maya. You cannot remove. Sahaja, you cannot remove. Can you change your karma and be born again? I mean, not, not in a Christian sense. But in <laughs> literally, can you be born in a different family with a different body? No. no. Then what can you change? Bhranti jatadatmya the I the mistaken identification because of your sense of limitation and self uh, what is that? Self ignorance that you can change. That's why she, it says Brahmayati. Mm. That Brahmayati, the, the 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 she who deludes mm. here, she deludes. How? Bhavasagare by, you know, by making you identify with the ocean of disaster, the ocean of samsara, which is really a notion of samsara. Oh Maya, that which you, that which you are, you know, you are so clever, oh Maya. All sarcastic, okay? She's too clever by far. Oh Maya, you're the cleverest of all and you make the impossible possible. And now you have made for us the break possible. <laughs> Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamagachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Vyonaha Hari Om Ten minutes and then we will come back.